Hi, it's Cayman Reynolds. This horizontal hive has not been treated for mites since winter time, so we need to get in here, evaluate the mite loads. We're going to do that with an alcohol wash using a little bit of a different method today. This is an interesting device. I'll explain it more later. And we are going to also put the treatment in today. We'll be using Thymol, the ApoGuard brand product. And we'll we're also going to have to try to kind of change some things up because of the space gaps that we have in this horizontal hive to make sure the, the treatment's going to work good. And those of you who didn't know, we've had a supersedure. It happened about a month and a half or so back, and there's a new queen in here. So that means we should be rocking in there, but let's make sure that we have a queen. And then we'll perform the treatment. First things first. Ah, there's my hive tool. All right. The brood nest is usually over in here. It always has been. We're just going to pry this on up. They've really propolized everything down. The population has shrank quite a bit, and I've also put a little... There we go. I've also put a divider board I'll show you later on this right side the bees can't access this cavity over into here and this is good because right now the population's smaller just due to the summer dearth and i want the treatment to be more effective now since we pulled the honey we got about five gallons of honey off of this colony we have fed them three gallons of sugar syrup they had some honey left over though as well so between the two of those things i think they look really good. I'm looking down at them, and it looks like they're stored. So let's see if there's a queen, and then we need to get that alcohol wash. There's a little bit of ants, as you can see, right here in the edge. I have not done anything to keep the ants away. It's not hurting the bees, but they're really annoying as they are getting all over me. And this is very common when you use inner covers with Langstroth equipment or any type of equipment, because the bees can't get up here and patrol this. I really need to put something up in here. I just haven't got around to doing it. And it's not harming the bees. It's just really annoying more than anything. Oh, wow. Look at that nice pattern right there. So that fresh queen is just coming up in here. And speaking of fresh queen, there she is right there. What a gorgeous, nice looking August queen. Beautiful pattern. This just makes our work so nice. The last video we filmed, it was the total opposite. We could not find that queen for anything. And this one right here is making it easy, so we appreciate that. I don't know how well you can see this. Well, I'll see if you can get a film on that, but look down in there. Can you see that jelly? This colony has good nutrition. We left plenty of frames that had bee bread in them. I forgot to mention we have fed a pound of pollen patty to this colony with that three gallons of sugar syrup. And that is important. Now using this ApoGuard Thymol product, you are not to feed sugar syrup or any type of uh, liquid sugar feed during this time because it blocks and affects a lot of the guard tendencies of the bees, the pheromone communication. And that's why the queen will slow down her lane and also it's easier for other colonies to rob that colony, even if it's strong, just because they're not good about defending themselves with the thymol product. And formic acid is the same way. So you don't want to feed sugar syrup. So if you know you're going to be using it, try to make sure they have plenty of feed beforehand because this is going to be a two-week treatment. And in the summer dearth, when there's no nectar coming in, they can easily go through a gallon of sugar syrup, thin sugar syrup a week. So you don't want them to starve out. That's really going to affect the, affect the colony. Let's get down in here and pull a frame to do the alcohol wash. It's wonderful that we've found that queen. And she's laying a great pattern. So we, we know we have a young queen. Sometimes with these products like ApoGuard, these strong ones, if it's a weak queen with poor pheromones, sometimes that can get them superseded. So we shouldn't have that as an issue. This is just a bunch of eggs and emerging bees. This will be good. Wow, that is a really good cap brood frame. And let's get this queen back in here as quickly as we can. 
It's not good to leave them out on the ground like this. Oh, there we go. That's great. I'm just going to check one more frame just because I want to see what she's doing. But you can see that population has really gone down. If you've watched the older videos back when it was the honey flow, it's very natural in summer for them to do that. The supersedure also really affected that as well. So you can see where we have it blocked off here with that board that came with this horizontal hive. We have our frame feeder over in here. And two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, fifteen frames of bees. They've drawn a little bit of comb over that frame feeder. We could put a couple more combs over in here. I need to before the fall flow starts. But I have not got around to it yet. We got some drawn combs and these ants really are not biting me or anything. They're just kind of annoying me. They've got to go just like these mites. Queen's down in there. And let me just bring this on over. It's made to go on a, hor uh, a Langstroth hive, not a horizontal handle, but it still fits good right there. This is also used for making packages. This comes from Cutler Bee Supply, and I'll leave a link below. They also are the ones that make our, or sell the incubators that Bob Benny uses, and the one that I purchased in addition to the one that I already had, and I have really enjoyed it. It has been a great buy for me. Um, but this right here has one exit, here at the bottom, and just like your regular alcohol wash dealio, the bees get put down in here. This is the line, of course. And what I'm going to do this time is, since it's my first time using it, I'm going to get them up to that line, and then after we've done the alcohol wash, you use this screen that's just hanging on right here and put it in between the two so it'll separate them. You'll see. But afterwards, I'm going to individually count the bees and the varroa mites so we can kind of get a gauge for if we get up to that line is it close to that 300 mark, which is what I typically use and go for is 300 bees in an alcohol wash. All right, got a little bit of shade and a little bit of breeze going. Look back in there and you can see that a purple iron weed and it's over in there. The bees get a white pollen from that and you can see the, the buds that are just starting to yellow and that is the, the latter goldenrod that actually produces nectar. The early stuff that goes more horizontal with how it branches out doesn't do much. I know I'm getting sidetracked. Over here we have wing stem and you can just see these gorgeous wings on these plants and they produce a wonderful blossom. There's multiple varieties just like with uh, the goldenrod that produce good nectar and pollens for bees. So. We've had plenty of rain. Look how tall that goldenrod is. It's going to be a good fall flow, hopefully, as long as we don't get rained out. Now, I like this frame because there's a merging brood on it. There's also larvae on it. This is important when taking in an alcohol wash. You don't have to have the emerging brood. This is about the perfect frame that I would want to get because with this frame, I know I have a lot of nurse bees because they have to take care of the larvae down in there that's being hand fed. And also these emerging bees are going to have varroa mites on them as they exit out if they do. And these bees look really healthy. However, things can change a lot in the next couple months as bees are heading into winter. And we've got to make sure that these bees stay healthy because I'd like to see this colony come out of winter and do a great job. That worked pretty good. There's a lot of bees down in there. Check that out, Laurel. Mm -hmm. These bees are really nice and gentle for this uh, hot day. Mm -hmm. So now I've just got to make sure that I don't get too many down in that watch. So you can see we've got a little bit down in here. So that's too much right there. Yeah, too much. That's about right, I'd say. Yeah, that's right. Now this is, you know, not perfect because you can't get the exact 300 bees every time. But we just need 
a rough estimate so we know around about uh, what our mite loads look like. This is very important. It's my least favorite part of beekeeping, but it is a very important part to see how many mites we have in a colony like this. So now we are going to take some alcohol. Some people are using Dawn dish soap and there's some other ways of doing it. I prefer 91%. You can recycle this and use it many, many times, but this kills the bees almost instantly. And that's what the reason I like it, is if I'm going to do this, I want to make sure that it's fast. So, I'm probably applying too much in here, but again, if I'm going to do this, I would prefer it to be done quickly. All right. And so we're just going to stir that around really good. And then that way, it's going to kill them really quickly. And I don't think I got it on quite right. Yeah, there we go. So you want to stir that around for a, a good bit because the mites will detach like as soon as this stuff hits them. But you want to make sure that they're able to get clear of those bees. One thing that's different with this alcohol wash versus some of the others that I've used is typically you just have one chamber and so you but you have a inside that chamber you have a like a screen that the bees will get into and you swirl it around or shake it and the mites can fall to that outside bottom edge and on the inside the bees stay there. Well with this one it's a little bit different so I've added more alcohol to it than I normally would. Usually I just put enough in my easy check Varroa um, alcohol wash device and I just do it enough for the bees. Well this one it needs more. Originally I was I just had it all flipped to this side and I was stirring it around. I only got one mite. Well then I started I put more in it and started shaking it up like this because the main thing is you want to get those mites away from it. Look at all the alcohol that's coming out on me though and I've tried to do it a couple different ways and I'm having issues with alcohol coming out and getting on my hands. Um, you want to wear gloves, um, it's, you know, it's alcohol, it's not the end of the world. Um, but right now I've got one, two, three, four, five, and that's what I had earlier. You can see them all down right in there and then some wax flakes and some other stuff. That one might be a juvenile. No, that's just a piece of propolis. So there's five mites in there. And if this is 300 bees, then we're a little under 2%. We don't want anything above 1% going into winter if we want our bees to be in ideal conditions. Preferably lower than that because we are in August still. By September this quantity of mites is going to double. And then October our bees will still be brooding and then it's going to double again. And October is when most beekeepers in Tennessee lose their bees. Or they, the colonies are so weak going into winter even if they don't abscond from viruses they're just not going to either make it through winter or they're going to come out so weak you're not going to be able to hardly do anything with them anyways. And the queen could be compromised. So I'm just going to shake this just a little bit more. Just trying to separate those mites out away from those bees. And I'm going to assume that I've missed one at least. And I've done this several times now. We're still getting five. That's still too high. So we're going to put a treatment in here. And this is a treatment that we've used for many years and it is Apigard Thymol. Now, one of the things when you use this product, it does have several instructions that are, it's temperature sensitive, so you don't want to use all of it if the temperature's too hot. And also, you need to have some room above the bees. They need to be able to get into this tray. All I have is this space on the top bar, and then when I put this inner cover back on, that doesn't give me a lot of space for the bees to get up in here and move it out. We want them to pull these crystals out and move it around the colony. We also want to center over the brood area. So there you can see the thymol. It's in a gel matrix and this is 50 grams. Now you can do three treatments of like 33 grams instead if the temperature is really hot. 
It is pushing at hot temperature, but I'm going to do two rounds of 50 grams, and then we'll come back and do an alcohol wash after the treatment's over, and we'll see how that goes. However, with this treat, this uh, whole tan and treatment in there, and that right there, they're not going to be able to get up into that, and it won't be near as effective. So I have created my own delivery, and um, it, I'm going to use this card right here and scrape it off onto it. So excuse me, bees, excuse me, bees. Yes. <laughs> Just the card itself is going to intimidate several of them to not even be able to reproduce. They'll have to find a safe place somewhere in the hive. They just don't make mites like they used to. So I'm scraping all this out and the bees are already starting to move away from it, which is pretty normal. But we need them to be able to access that pile. And I'm just kind of scraping the rest of this out of here. And don't get it on your fingers. It'll burn. So be really careful. It's best to use gloves if you're going to handle it like this. Now you can use a syringe. Most of the time we use the tub, but I had some of these left and it's still within the expiration date. Make sure you store this in a cool environment, room temperature, that kind of stuff, because otherwise the thymol will separate from the gel and it'll off gas faster. And you definitely don't want to use it past the expiration. A lot of these products, once they come loose again, they can off gas a lot faster and cause damage to your bees. So the rest of these crystals, I'm just gonna go ahead and just kind of stick down in there. It won't hurt anything. They'll just track that around. So we have a little, I'm just gonna go ahead and say a 2% infestation. I'm gonna take these bees inside. It killed those bees. They stopped moving within seconds of that alcohol. Don't like doing it, but it does help us know what's going on. And I really believe had, if we did not treat this colony, it may have survived the winter but there's no way it would be a nice honey production colony like we hope to show you next year. We've got a great queen in there, now for the dead mites, and we've got some good nutrition on the way with all these beautiful plants. So I'm gonna leave links down below where you can see about this. I'm anxious to try this out in the spring, shake some packages. I'm a little uh, disappointed with how much alcohol leaks out of this thing, because it is quite a bit, and I've tried several times to get it to hold in there better. I'm sure there's some stuff that probably can be uh, you know, Teflon in there, but no one's got time for that. I definitely don't. Um, but it has potential. I definitely um, like this little device right here. So anyways, I'm going to leave the links down below if you'd like to check those out. And we will come back, treat this again in seven days, because you need to do this twice with the 50 grams. And then we'll do an alcohol wash follow-up. And hopefully we won't see any of these mites in here, and we'll see still some good rebounding brood patterns after the thymol is done because it will slow the queen down. And with this nutrition coming in, they'll go into winter in this nice insulated hive and come out ready to make a big honey crop next year. Thanks for watching this video. If you have any questions, leave them below.